Welcome to your first week of homeschooling using Right Start Maths Level D. I hope you are excited to get started. Today we are going to go over lessons one through four, what supplies you're going to need, and some things to know and consider as you're teaching these lessons. Here is a list of the materials you are going to need for the week. You are going to need the lesson manual. You're also going to need the Yellow is the Sun CD, or if you don't have a CD player or a CD-ROM on your computer, you can go uh, to the, our website and we have our songs listed there. You can listen to them through your computer or other device. You will need the abacus. This is what the abacus looks like. You're going to need the math card games book. And the games that are played in um, the second edition program comes from the fifth edition. So you'll wanna double check and make sure you have the fifth edition, especially if you're borrowing materials from a friend. You will also need the basic card deck, and that's the green cards. They have green on one side and then basic numbers on the other, zero through 10. You're going to need the student's worksheets this week. You will also need the place value cards, and that looks like this. You'll have the thousands, hundreds, tens and ones. Oops, <laughs> there it goes, tens and ones. And you'll also be using the abacus tiles. And that looks like this, these little cards. In the first lessons, or the first lessons of level D are called review lessons. Much of the material covered in these lessons will seem extremely easy and it will be tempting for you to skip quickly through those lessons or maybe even skip them altogether. However, if you are new to Right Start Math, these lessons are very important for you and your child as they will learn how to use the manipulatives and strategies as taught in Right Start Math. So let's start talking about lesson one. If you have your lesson manual, go ahead and open it up. Now take a look at the top left-hand side of the page. Um, you'll see the word objectives. And there, that objectives are basically the goals of the lesson. So the goals for lesson one will be to construct quantities one to 10 on their fingers, to enter quantities one to 10 on the abacus, to identify quantities one to 10 on the abacus, and to review math facts that equal 10. On the top right hand side of the page, you will see the materials listed. I'm not gonna read over the materials for you, you can read them there, but um, that is always the first thing that I look at when I start a lesson. I just open up the book, I look at the materials, and I usually send my kids to go off and get those materials for the day. Um, you're going to, on this particular day, warm up by singing or saying, if you're not comfortable singing, Yellow is the Sun poem. Um, be sure that you and your child raise the correct corresponding fingers for the appropriate word. For example, uh, the first line is yellow is the sun, this is only one. So make sure you're showing the fingers as described on the, in the book, in the lesson manual. So after the warm-up section, you're going to start teaching and the, doing the activity portion of the lesson. The first section of the lesson is called Exploring the AL Abacus. And here you're going to ask questions to your child to help your child get familiar with the abacus. Note, when using the abacus, the AL should be on the top right-hand side as you're looking at the abacus. Now I have um, put a piece of paper on the back of this abacus so you can see the beads more clearly. But here you're going to want the AL to be on your top right as you are looking at the abacus. And when it's cleared, all of the beads are going to be on the right-hand side under that AL. One of the questions in this lesson will have you ask your child to find the exact number of beads on the abacus. So if this is a new type of learning and your child looks at this abacus and they're like, I don't know, I don't know what that is. Um, then you'll want to encourage your child to start exploring and figuring it out. Um, this is a new type of learning process, so they may kind of be a little resistant up at first. So if that's the case, then start asking them questions or pull out the abacus and say, well, let's see, you know, here we have 10 and here we have another 10. So how many do we have all together? So help them find out, help them figure that out. At the bottom of the first page, you are going to learn a new term called subitizing. And I'm telling you this for two reasons. One, since you know how to pronounce it, it's called subitizing. Um, but also, the definition of subitizing is quick, a quick recognition of a quantity without counting. So, how does that work? How many is this? That's one, right? How many is this? 
three. You just subitized. That's all it is. A quick recognition of a quantity without counting. Now, one thing to notice is um, the explanation section and the right-hand margin. Uh, you'll see that on every single page of your lessons. Here, you're going to find extra notes for you to help you teach and understand what you're teaching to your child. It will also give you some tidbits and helpful hints along the way. So if your child is reacting an unusual way, sometimes if you look over in the explanations, it will give you an extra idea of why they're reacting that way. So let's take a look at one of the explanations on the second page of the lesson. Um, it's actually the first explanation. And it says this, be sure the child uses her left hand for five and her right hand for, for mounts over five. This way her hands will match the abacus. So for example, um, if I have the number seven and the seven here, we have the abacus, we have five and two more. So we want that to match. We want to have the five and two. We want it to match what it's showing on the abacus. So that's actually pretty specific. Um, in the middle of the second page, under the heading uh, quantities six to 10, you're going to find that your child will start um, identifying quantities and moving beads on the abacus. So if they're, uh, you will see that if we're moving six beads, that would be six. Now, a lot of times when the kids first start working with the abacus, they're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then scoot the six feet over. What we're going to want to do is get them away from the counting. So if your child does that the first time, that's fine, great. Then have them clear the abacus and say, good, now let's see if we can find six without counting. So then they're going to come back over here and do this. That's the goal. We want them to go straight to that six and scoot it over. Now, if your child struggles with that, particularly like with seven or eight, actually eight is one of those harder ones. <laughs> so if we have eight and they're counting them, then clear it. And if they're, you ask them to do it again and they're counting again, clear it again and say, okay, what's two? Have them show you two, clear the abacus, and then go back to eight. What's eight? Clear the abacus, show me five. Clear the abacus, show me eight. Keep going back to that eight until your child goes straight to that bead without counting. That's what you're going to want to do. So that might take a little bit of extra time, um, but get your child away from counting those beads. On the second page, your child will build the stairs on the abacus. This is a fabulous exercise for your child to start visualizing the math facts to 10. Let me show you what I mean. So if I have, obviously this top row is 10, five and five is 10. So if I have a four, four plus six equals 10, right? So they're able to see that simply by looking at the abacus and moving that one set of beads over. So this will be, is the fabulous exercise for them to start visualizing the math facts to 10. You are going to finish this lesson with one of the favorite games in Right Start Math, um, for the younger ages anyway. It's called Go to the Dump. Um, this is basically Go Fish. The goal of this particular game is for your child to practice their math facts of 10. Um, each day, also, your lesson is going to end with a conclusion, uh, which is just a few different questions, um, wrapping the lesson up in a nice little bow about what was taught for the day. Now, if your child cannot answer those questions or struggles with those questions, then you might want to go back and review sections of your lesson, um, either right then or maybe later on in the day or maybe the next day. The goal of the conclusion is just to make sure they understood what you taught. Okay, now let's turn to lesson two. In today's lesson, there are several addition strategies that are being taught. You're going to want to spend several minutes with each strategy. However, you will find that your child will probably gravitate toward one strategy over another, um, and there will be some strategies that are harder or more difficult than other strategies. Your child does not need to master every single strategy. We just want to uh, expose your child to a variety of different ways of thinking through addition problems. At the end of the lesson, you may want to ask your child which strategy was their favorite, which was the easiest, which one was most difficult, just to kind of um, get their, your idea of what it is that they liked or didn't like. Um, you, during this lesson, you're also going to want to use the abacus as much as possible. You're going to want to get your child more and more comfortable using that abacus. You definitely need to use the abacus for the two-five strategy and the make-tens strategy. 
in the make 10 strategy, you're going to have your child trade beads on different lines. So let me show you what that looks like. So for the make the 10 strategy, um, we're shown this problem nine plus four. So let me show you what it looks like on the abacus. We're going to add nine plus four. Okay, now as you will find in the lesson and as you know, it's much easier to add 10 to a number than it is to add nine to a number. So that's what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to tra transfer this nine to make it a full 10. But to do that, we have to make an exchange. So we're gonna take this bead here and we're gonna trade it for this bead here. And I always play with my kids. I always say, ready on your mark, get set, trade. And they'll trade those beads over. And so now we've traded the nine for a 10 but we now have three instead of four. So our answer is 13. In this lesson, you're going to complete a worksheet, the worksheet one. However, this worksheet is filled in based on playing a math card game called Addition War. Um, you will find instructions for Addition War in the math card game manual, um, A44. So you go to the Addition chapter and look up A44. There's also a blog on our website to show you how to play that game if you would like to view that as well. Your student will use the game to complete the worksheet. So they'll basically turn two cards over, some of these cards here, like the basic card deck. They'll two, turn two cards over, solve the problem, and then write that equation in the strategy that it supports. Now, your child can use more than one strategy for one math fact. For example, um, the math fact six plus seven will use both the near double strategy as well as the two five strategy. It will work for both. Um, so you can put that uh, problem into both of those uh, sections on the worksheet. The worksheet does not have solutions listed on your lesson manual because it's based on the game that is being played. So um, that's, this is the only time the solutions to the worksheet is not included in the lesson manual. All right, let's go ahead and turn to lesson three. All right, one thing you're going to notice in this lesson is that you're going to want to have your child say quantities in the math way or in place value form. So if you'll go down to where it says tens on the abacus, you will see your child will say something like two ten. <laughs> now this is one of those activities that many parents skip with the excuse saying that their child already knows their numbers and they don't want to confuse their children. However, your children are so much more resilient and flexible than you think. Um, I would definitely not skip this section. By saying the quantities in, in this case in tens, um, the math way, they are learning and understanding place value so much better. Children learn in a variety of ways, visually, kinesthetically, and auditorily. This activity is the auditory part of their learning, so don't skip it. It will really enhance your child's understanding of place value. Um, it, you never know. It might be one of those things that just is that final click for your child to grasp what place value is, so don't skip it. I really encourage you to go through it. One thing to note when using the abacus for quantities greater than 50 is that the colors switch. That way, your child does not need to count the tens. They can see it. Let me show you what I mean. So we see five rows here in one color and then it switches. So if I need to um, have 60, the number 60 or six tens, I'm going to go down to here, right? Because that's where the color changes, five and then six. If I have the quantity of 70, I know I need two and five. So that way your child doesn't even have to count when it comes to the tens. Also, um, in this lesson, you will have your child find out how many tens are in 100. Now that's kind of an odd concept, and so your child might struggle with that. So if that's the case, um, show the abacus and have your child determine how many tens are in 100. There's 100 beads, and there are 10 tens in 100. If your child kind of struggles with that a little bit, then periodically through the rest of the lesson, just say, so how many tens are in 100? 10, 10, great, and then continue on in the next activity and then come back and ask, how many tens are in 100? 10, 10, and by the end of the lesson, they'll have that down. So today, you're going to play a game called Can You Find? 
The instructions for the game can be found in the Math Card Games Manual in the Number Sense chapter, um, and the game number is N43. You will need the place value cards for this particular game. That's these things here. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn to lesson four, your last lesson of the week, and we are going to talk about place value and syllables in this particular lesson. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, the previous day we worked on speaking place value, right? So we called this 210, but we're going to now emphasize the syllables, 210. Two syllables, two digits. We're going to do the same thing with hundreds. 200, three syllables, three digits. Now, the thousands causes a little bit of a problem. And in fact, I used to tell my kids the only time they could stick their tongue out at me is when we're working on place value. So if we have a 5,000, we're going to do 5,000. 5,000. Now, you think, okay, that's great. That's a fun little activity, but I don't necessarily need that. Well, your place value is really hard. And so um, if you were to ask them to build the number 5,020, many kids will tend to build it similar to this. Okay, we see a problem, right? 5,000 should have how many digits? Four, right? But we only have three here. So it kind of helps work the student to help them realize, oh, wait a minute, something's not quite right on that. So don't skip this uh, activity, especially if your child struggles at all with place value. Um, also, today, you're going to work on side two of the abacus. So let me show you a little bit how that works. All right, so here we have the abacus, but we flipped it over and we flipped it up on, us, on, our, on its side. So you can see that you have the one, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands shown on the abacus. And you're going to want that on the top, of course. Now, each of these two wires here represent any quantity that's in the ones place value place. Any uh, bead in these two wires will total 10. Any bead that's in these two wires represent the hundreds place value and any one, any beads that are in either one of these two columns represent um, the thousands place value. So if I need to input um, six, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to scoot up six beads. Now notice, I did not do it this way. That's because that will be very important later on. For right now, you just need to know that you want to split this quantity up as evenly as possible. So if you have six, you're going to have three and three. If you have seven, you're going to need four and three. Um, when my, my daughter was first doing this, she's a struggling learner. I thought, oh boy, that's going to be hard for her. But she actually adapted to that very, very quickly. So just make sure your child uh, understands that they're going to split that quantity as evenly as possible uh, between the two columns. So if I want to show the quantity of 30 or three tens, I'm going to scoot three beads up in the tens columns. If I want to show 400, I'm going to sc scoot up four beads in the hundreds column columns. And if I want to show 5,000, I'm going to scoot up five, oops, five beads in the thousand columns. So in this particular activity, your child is going to uh, find six tens or 60, and they're gonna do that. They're gonna need 200, and they're gonna to need to build 7,005. So you're gonna need 7,000 and then five. Now, at the end of lesson four, your child is going to complete worksheet two. The solutions for worksheet two are listed in bold in the lessons manual under the section called worksheet two. Okay, now you're ready to start teaching. Remember, keep math fun and exciting for your child. Don't forget that if you have any questions or concerns, you can email or call us for help. I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next week when we will talk about lessons five through nine. Bye everybody.